there, everybody. Welcome back to Legends Lore. Today, we are going to be doing the long-awaited Star Wars Legends comic book timeline. Make sure you give me a like. That'll really help me out. This video was a labor of love. It took a very long time to make, and I hope you all enjoy it and watch the entire thing, because there are some things that I've grouped together on the timeline and haven't just put on the graphics. So you need to watch the video to actually get the full, complete idea for what you have to read. Comment below, let me know what you thought of this, and of course, share this with other fellow Star Wars fans who might need help discovering how to read Legends comics. All right, let's look at the first part of the timeline. The Star Wars Legends comic book timeline begins with Dawn of the Jedi. Dawn of the Jedi takes place around 25,793 years before the Battle of Yavin and contained three main story arcs over the course of 16 issues. There was a zero issue, then the next five issues contained a story called Dawn of the Jedi Force Storm. The second story was Dawn of the Jedi The Prisoner of Bogan, and the final story was Dawn of the Jedi Force War. We jump over 25,000 years into the future for the Old Republic timeline. The Old Republic timeline begins in comics with Tales of the Jedi. Tales of the Jedi takes place in two different parts of the timeline. First, you begin in 5000 BBY, during what is known as the Golden Age of the Sith. You would first read the volume The Golden Age of the Sith, containing a zero issue and five other issues. Then you would move on to The Fall of the Sith Empire, which is a sequel story. After that, you would jump a thousand years into the future to 4000 BBY and begin the main Tales of the Jedi series. This main series takes place from 4000 BBY to 3986 BBY. The series begins with a two-issue arc titled Ulic Keldroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon, then continues with the saga of Nomi Sunrider for three issues, before moving into the Freedon Nod Uprising for two more issues. After that, you would read Dark Lords of the Sith. Dark Lords of the Sith is made up of six issues and has a zero-issue special as well. After that, you would read The Sith War, which is a six-issue series, and then you would finish it up with Redemption over the course of five issues. After you finish Tales of the Jedi, you would jump to the short story Shadows and Light. Shadows and Light is collected in Star Wars Tales number 22. Next, you would read Knights of the Old Republic, the comic book series. Although it has the same name as the video game, Knights of the Old Republic, the comic book series, is actually a prequel to the video game as well. It is set in 3964 BBY and follows the Jedi Zane Carrick, a Padawan who is framed for the Padawan Massacre. Knights of the Old Republic ran for 52 issues, then was wrapped up in the miniseries Knights of the Old Republic War. After that, you would read the short story from Star Wars Tales number 24, Unseen, Unheard. It's a story from the perspective of Vissus Mar, telling how she became the apprentice to Darth Nihilus. After that, you would get into the Old Republic MMORPG tie-in comics. The Old Republic comics were initially released as web comics before getting single issues and paperbacks. The first story arc is the Old Republic Blood of the Empire. This arc contains three issues and follows the Sith apprentice Tadem Kel. The next arc, Threat of Peace, also is made up of three issues. Threat of Peace was also released before Blood of the Empire, but takes place later in the timeline. It focuses on the Treaty of Coruscant and its aftermath. The final arc in the Old Republic series is The Lost Sons. It focuses on a new story starring the character Theron Shan, the son of Jedi Master Satil Shan. Then you would read Lost Tribe of the Sith, Spiral, a five-issue miniseries by John Jackson Miller detailing the Lost Tribe of the Sith. The arc focuses on the adventures and experiences of the young tribal outcast Parlon Spinner. Next, you would read the short story Prototypes featured in the Star Wars Visionaries collection. After, you would read the Knight Errant series. The Knight Errant series is made up of three different comic book arcs. First, Knight Errant Aflame is largely narrated through the point of view of the Jedi Knight Kira Holt. The second arc of the series is known as Deluge, and the final arc is Escape. After that, you would read All For You, one of the stories in Tales number 17. After that, you would read the short story The Apprentice, also in Star Wars Tales number 17. Next is the story Jedi vs. Sith. 
This comic was the original version that tells the story of the end of the New Sith Wars, the Battle of Rusan, and how the Rule of Two came into fruition. Next, we would move into the Rise of the Empire era, which is very long and contains a ton of stories, so I've decided to give all of these subtitle names so you can more easily track which part of the Rise of the Empire era you are in when you're reading these things. The era begins with Heart of Darkness, a story in Star Wars Tales number 16. After that, you would read Star Wars Republic Vow of Justice. It's included in the last few pages of the last three issues of Prelude to Rebellion. The story follows Kiati Mundi as he recalls being chosen for Jedi training. Next is the story Stones that appeared in Star Wars Tales number 13. Next is the miniseries Jedi the Dark Side. Set in 53 BBY, the story follows Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan Xenatos as they are sent by the Jedi Council to prevent civil war from erupting on Xenatos' homeworld of Telus IV. After that, you would read Survivors, which appeared in Star Wars Tales number 13. Next is Children of the Force, another short story in Star Wars Tales number 13. Star Wars Tales of the 13's run continues with The Secret of Tet Ami. Moving away from Ace Windu, you would get into Star Wars Tales number 14's story, Mythology. This story instead focuses on Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn. Taking a look at the next graphic here, we would get into the story from Star Wars Tales number 1, Life death, and the living force. Next is one of Star Wars Tales' most iconic stories, Star Wars Tales number 20, George R. Binks. It details the tragic story of George R. Binks, the long-suffering father of Jar Jar Binks. After that, you would read Yaddle's Tale, The One Below, a story from Star Wars Tales number 5. After that, you would get into the two miniseries, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. These two miniseries begin with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, the Aurorian Express. The second arc is made up of three issues and is titled The Last Stand on Ord Mantell. After that, you would get back into some short stories, beginning with Aura's Song, a story presented in Dark Horse Presents Annual 2000 Girls Rule. Next is the short story from Star Wars Tales number 7, Jedi Chef. Next, Urchins is a story from Star Wars Tales number 14. The next miniseries you would read is the four-part series Jedi Council Acts of War. The story depicts a conflict between Jedi Council members, namely Mace Windu, as they take on the volatile Yin Chori. Back to some Tales stories, you would get into A Summer's Dream, a story from Tales number 5. Continuing with Tales, you would read Tales number 24, the story Marked. Next, in Tales number 10, you would read the story Nameless. In this story, Maul explains the story behind his double-bladed lightsaber to Darth Sidious. Looking at the next graphic here, we move to Star Wars Tales number 3, the story Deal with a Demon. The next Tales story is Star Wars Tales number 7, Single Cell. Next, you would get into the official first arc of the Star Wars Republic series, Prelude to Rebellion. It sees Kiati Mundi charged with murder and swiftly drawn into a web of conspiracy and intrigue that could rock the galaxy to its foundations. After that, you would read the miniseries Darth Maul from 2000. In this miniseries, Darth Sidious ordered his loyal apprentice Darth Maul to strike down one of the most powerful organizations in the galaxy, Black Sun. You'd move back to Star Wars Tales this time, reading Star Wars Tales number 3, the story The Death of Captain Tarples. Next, you would finally get into the first adaptation of the first movie in the chronological timeline, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Next, you would read a series of one-shots all collected in the story Star Wars Episode 1 Adventures. The stories in here contain Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace Half Issue, Episode 1 Obi-Wan Kenobi, Episode 1 Queen Amidala, Episode 1 Qui-Gon Jinn, finally Episode 1 Anakin Skywalker. Next you would read the webcomic series Pod Racing Tales. It consists of 8 vignettes featuring the Boonta Eve classic pod racers from Episode 1. Next in the timeline is the four-issue miniseries Django Fett Open Seasons. This story dives into the past of Django Fett, most notably revealing how Fett became a Mandalorian warrior and how he was recruited by Count Dooku. Next you would get into what was the second trade paperback but technically third story of Star Wars Republic, Star Wars Republic Outlander. Outlander follows Kiati Mundi on his first assignment after joining the Jedi Council. The next Republic story arc you would read is Emissaries to Malastare. This story sees half of the Jedi Council travel to the exotic world of Malastare 
to negotiate a peace treaty between two of the planet's warring factions. Now you'd move back into Star Wars Tales, this time with Star Wars Tales number two, Incident at Horn Station. Then you would move on to Star Wars Tales number eight story, Bad Business. And then finally the story, Nomad, from Star Wars Tales number 21, 22, 23, and 24. It was all collected into a single story in Star Wars Tales number 24. Next, you would go back into Star Wars Republic, reading issues 19 through 22 that make up the story Twilight. Twilight follows Quinlan Voss, who has lost his memory. He must not only find a way to rediscover his past, but also track down his Padawan, Ala Sakura. Next, you would read Star Wars Republic Infinity, made up of issues number 23 through 26. This story also follows Quinlan Voss and takes place three months after Twilight. You'd continue with Republic, reading issues 28 through 31, in the story The Hunt for Aura Singh. After that, you would move back to a short story titled Heart of Fire. Heart of Fire was released across three issues of Dark Horse Extra number 35 through number 37. This story also follows Quinlan Boss as he recovers in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant after the events of The Hunt for Aura Singh. You'd move back to the Republic next, this time reading Republic Darkness. Republic Darkness covers issues 32 through 35. This story sees Quinlan Boss specifically requested to investigate the planet Kifix, and soon sees him finding himself on another deadly mission. You'd keep going with Republic this time reading issues number 36 through 39, The Stark Hyperspace War. The story sees smuggler and pirate Iako Stark's commercial combine disrupt the production of Bacta. It's up to the members of the Jedi Council to untangle the many deceits and intrigues and bring the criminals to justice. The next story from Star Wars Republic is the Deperonian version. It's largely a retelling of the story Jedi Council Acts of War, this time from the point of view of Deperonian smuggler Vilmar Grark. This contains Republic issues number 40 and 41. Next is the Republic story, Star Wars Republic Rite of Passage. This story is contained in issues number 42 through 45. This story again follows Quinlan Voss and was technically the last story to be released under the name of Star Wars before it was officially retitled to Star Wars Republic. Let's move on to the next graphic here, and we're going to start with Star Wars Jedi Quest. Jedi Quest was an adaptation of the story Jedi Quest Path to Truth, a special edition book in the junior novel series Jedi Quest. This story sees young Anakin Skywalker, who must find a way to overcome his fears, including the memory of the man who killed Qui-Gon Jinn, the vicious Darth Maul. Next, we turn to the first story of the Bounty Hunters one-shot series, Bounty Hunters Aura Singh. Then you would switch to the two one-shots that follow each other in the timeline, Star Wars Jango Fett and Star Wars Sam Wessel. Next is the short story, Dark Horse Extra number 44 through 47, Poison Moon. We move back into Star Wars Tales, this time with Tales number 12, A Jedi's Weapon. Next is the three-issue miniseries, Starfighter Crossbones. Crossbones is a spin-off of the successful video game Starfighter, telling the story of the pirate Captain Nim, and his hunt for his nemesis, Sol Sixa. You'd go back into a short story this time with another story from Star Wars Visionaries, The Eyes of Revolution. You move back into Republic here, this time reading the story Honor and Duty. Honor and Duty is made up of three issues from Republic number 46 through Republic number 48. We switch perspectives from Quinlan Voss this time to Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, who are ordered to help protect a senator from a small system who has the power to swing a vote and with it, a death threat. Next is the Star Wars Tales number 13 story, Puzzle Piece. After that, you would read the Star Wars Tales number 10 story, The Way of the Warrior. This story follows Jango Fett and Boba Fett before Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. We'll move to the next graphic here. In this one, I did title Clone Wars, but these next couple stories do take place before Attack of the Clones, which is the official start of the Clone Wars. We'd first get into the first of the Hasbro slash Toys R Us exclusive comic books that came out in 2002, Practice Makes Perfect. This story follows Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi as they are trapped by droids. Next move to the Star Wars Tales number 13 story, the Sith and the Shadow. After that, you would read the Blood Ties miniseries, but only the first two issues. This starts with A Tale of Jango and Boba Fett number one and two. Next, you would read another of the Hasbro slash Toys R Us exclusive comics, 
full of surprises. This story sees Obi-Wan Kenobi heading to a meeting on Albacus when he's ambushed by Jango Fett. You would continue on with Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones is a four-issue miniseries chronicling the events of the film. After that, you would move to Star Wars Tales number 14, the story The Lesson. Next, you'd move back to the Hasbro Toys R Us exclusive comics, this time with Machines of War. This story sees Yoda's gunship under attack during the first battle of Geonosis. Next is the final Hasbro Toys R Us exclusive comic book, Most Precious Weapon. This story sees Count Dooku meditating in his solar sailor as he recounts his training with Jedi Master Yoda. We're going to move into the first of what is a long series of short stories from the Clone Wars Adventures Digest volumes, beginning with One of a Kind from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 8. Next we go back to Star Wars Republic, this time with issue number 49 which contains a single story known as Sacrifice. Next, issue number 50 also contains a self-contained story, this one titled The Defense of Kamino. We continue with Republic, this time going to the story The New Face of War. The New Face of War is contained in issues number 51 and 52. This issue sees Obi-Wan and Anakin travel back to Naboo with ARC Trooper Alpha-17. They eventually come into conflict with the bounty hunter Dirge and the Sith apprentice Asajj Ventress. Next we go to the first of the Jedi one-shot issue miniseries, starting with Jedi Mace Windu. This issue sees Mace Windu on a quest to reunite the divided ranks of the Jedi, where he confronts the same Jedi Swordmaster who had taught him his lightsaber form known as Vapod. We go back to the Clone Wars adventures this time with a volume 8 story old scores we go back to star wars tales this time with tides of terror from tales number 14 we cut back to star wars republic this time with issue number 53 again a singular story known as blast radius this issue finds obi-wan kenobi teamed up with several legendary jedi masters as they come in conflict with asajj ventress switch back to clone wars adventures this time for a volume 1 story fierce currents continuing with clone wars adventures this time Volume 10, a story known as Graduation Day. Jump over to Clone Wars Adventures Volume 3, this time Rogue's Gallery. Clone Wars Adventures Volume 1, the story Blind Force. Then Mace Windu and Sasi Teen star in the story Heavy Metal Jedi in Clone Wars Adventures Volume 1. Next is Clone Wars Adventures Volume 2, the story Hide in Plain Sight. And then we move on here to the next graphic, which is all Clone Wars Adventures stories. The first being Run, Mace, Run. Next is the story Skywalkers from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 2. After that, The Package from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 3. A Stranger in Town from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 3. One Battle also from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 3, starring Plo Koon. Then Spy Girls from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 7, starring Padme Amidala. Also from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 7 is The Precious Shining. Moving into Clone Wars Adventures Volume 8, you would read the Luminara Unduli story Versus. Also in Volume 8, you'd read a story about a lost battle droid known as Pathways. Then you would move into Volume 9 with the Dexter Jetster story, Appetite for Adventure. Next would be Life Below, a Quinlan Boss story in Clone Wars Adventures Volume 9. Then moving into the next graphic, we are almost done with the Clone Wars Adventures stories, at least consecutively here. We move to Mace Windu in No Way Out, a Clone Wars Adventure story in Volume 9, Thunder Road from Clone Wars Adventures Volume 10, Chain of Command also in Volume 10, then lastly also in Volume 10, Waiting. We jump back over to Star Wars Tales, this time with issue number 17, the story Dark Journey. We get into our next Jedi one-shot, this time Shock T. This story sees Shock T go on the offensive as she's caught on the ground of a war-torn planet known as Brintal 4. Going back to Star Wars Tales, this time issue number 19 has the story Rather Darkness Visible. Back to Republic here with issue number 54, the story Double Blind. This story once again follows Quinlan Voss. The next Jedi one-shot, Ayla Sakura, which follows Ayla as she goes undercover to ferret out a Separatist enclave. We go back to Clone Wars Adventures, this time for Volume 7, in a story called Impregnable, starring Boltar Swan. Then we get to the fourth Jedi one-shot issue, Count Dooku. This story sees Quinlan Voss posing as a renegade from the Republic, given the assignment to earn Dooku's trust and learn his secrets. We go back to Republic, this time for the seminal story, The Battle of Jabim. This story takes place over the course of four issues, from issue 55 to 58. 
After that, you would read Republic number 59, the story Enemy Lines. This story sees Anakin stranded behind enemy lines with fellow Jedi Asherod Het. Next, you would read Republic issue number 61, Dead Ends. This story follows Bail Organa as his ship is attacked by pirates. Next, you would jump to Republic issue number 63, Striking from the Shadows. This story follows Quinlan Boss once again as he has taken a fateful step that may plunge him so far into darkness that he can never recover. You follow that up with issue number 64, Bloodlines. This issue follows Jedi Ronar Kim, who strikes up a relationship with a rising politician, never dreaming that years later, that friendship will make him the target of one of the greatest evils the galaxy has ever seen. We go back to Republic number 60 here, to the story Hate and Fear. This story sees Obi-Wan Kenobi and the ARC Trooper Alpha prisoners in the castle of Dark Jedi Asajj Ventress. We then move forward again to issue number 62, No Man's Land, which once again stars Obi-Wan Kenobi and Alpha as they are pursued by separatists and bounty hunters after escaping Ventress's fortress. Then we get to the final issue of the one-shot Jedi miniseries, Yoda. This issue sees Yoda called upon to lead a clone army against the forces of a king who befriended him 200 years ago. Back to Republic again, you would get into the story Show of Force. Show of Force contains Republic issues number 65 and 66. Moving back to Clone Wars Adventures, going to Volume 5, you would read the story Bailed Out. This story, of course, follows Bail Organa. Next, you would move to Clone Wars Adventures Volume 5 for the story Heroes on Both Sides. Next slide is another one that is filled with a lot of short stories from Adventures Volumes and other comics. We start with Clone Wars Adventures Volume 6, It Takes a Thief. Also in Volume 6, we have the story Means and Ends. After that, we have our first short comic story published in the Star Wars Clone Wars comic. The Clone Wars comic was a comic magazine printed in the United Kingdom. We start with the story The Droid Deception, which appears in Volume 6, issue number 4. Then in Volume 6, issue number 3, you would read the story in triplicate. Follow that up with Volume 6, issue number 10, Suited. And then Volume 6, issue number 14, the story in the air. Moving back to Republic, issue number 68 has the story Armor. This story tells the point of view of Commander Bly as he tries to understand the mysteries of the Jedi viewed from a human perspective. Next is the four-issue miniseries General Grievous. This story follows the Padawan Flynn Kaibo as he recruits other Jedi who have lost friends and mentors at the hands of General Grievous, setting out to assassinate the Separatist General. Going back to Clone Wars Adventures, Volume 4 has the story Another Fine Mess starring C-3PO and R2-D2. Then you would read the story The Brink from Adventures Volume 4. Another Anakin story is featured in Clone Wars Adventures Volume 7, this one titled Creature Comfort. We then move on to the next graphic where we see the Star Wars The Clone Wars web comics. You would read all of them in a row right here before you would move on to the next entry on the timeline. You would start with Shadowed before moving to Prelude, then you would read Shakedown, Procedure, Agenda, Mouse Hunt, The Fall of Baleen, Discount, Departure, Transfer, The Dreams of General Grievous, Bait, Switch, Crash Course, Head Games, Neighbors, Cold Snap, and The Valley. There would technically be a little gap here if you were falling precisely on the timeline, but I would just recommend you continue here into the next set of stories, which would continue with Covetous, Curfew, The Ballad of Cham Sandula, Act on Instinct, and The Valsetian Operation. The Clone Wars web comics series were tied into the television show from 2008 to 2011. Each week a new comic was revealed, serving as a direct prequel usually to that episode of the series. We next get into the first digest-sized Clone Wars graphic novella, The Clone Wars Ships of Doom. Next is the second graphic novella from The Clone Wars Crash Course. Then you would get into the Clone Wars 2008 tie-in mainline Dark Horse comic series, Although you would start with the series' second arc, In Service of the Republic. This story follows Kit Fisto and Plo Koon as they are sent on a mission with a squad of Republic commandos to free the Kormai people and destroy the Separatists' icy mountain fortress. You go back to the Clone Wars novellas with The Colossus of Destiny, and then you read the final and third arc of the Clone Wars monthly comic series, Hero of the Confederacy. This story sees Anakin and Obi-Wan dispatched to negotiate for the Republic in a conflict that sees the Confederacy being provided with newer and more advanced ships from the world Valhari. 
back to the Clone Wars graphic novellas, this time the Wind Raiders of Talaran, then after Deadly Hands of Sean Ju, followed up by Strange Allies, then the free comic book day issue The Clone Wars The Gauntlet of Death, then you would move back to the Clone Wars graphic novella series with The Star Crusher Trap. Then you would go back to the mainline 2008 to 2009 Clone Wars comic for the first arc in the series, Slaves of the Republic. We go back to the Clone Wars UK magazine comics. This time I've decided to just lump them all together considering there is no gap between the stories of this line and the stories that follow after on the timeline. You would start with the story Repel All Borders. This is in volume 6, issue number 18. Then you would read the story in volume 6, issue number 19, Dug Out. You'd move to volume 6, issue number 20 and read the story Outgunned. Then you jump over to volume 6, issue number 22 and read Leisure. Then volume 6, issue number 24, Runaway Starfighter. Volume 6, issue number 26, The Only Good Clanker. Volume 6, issue number 29, Blind Jedi's Bluff. You jump ahead a bit to volume 6, issue number 31, to read the story Deadly Droid. Then backwards to volume 6, issue number 30, to read the story Out. Then ahead again to volume 6, issue number 32, to read the story The Fear Architects. Then volume 6, issue number 33, A Small Scrappy War. Volume 6, issue number 34, Frozen Out. Volume 6, issue number 35, Back to Raid. Volume 6, issue number 36, Ahsoka's Ark. Volume 6, issue number 37, Incident on Kashyyyk. Volume 6, issue number 39, Dead Shadows. Volume 6, issue number 40, Hyper Matters. Volume 6, issue number 42, The Collector. Then backwards to volume 6, issue number 41, Mandalorian Memories. Then you would move forward again to volume 6, issue number 43, Downhill. Volume 6, issue number 44, Mask of Iron. Volume 6, issue number 45, Power Down. Volume 6, issue number 46, Bane vs. Bane. Volume 6, issue number 47, Lockdown, which continues the story arc of Hyper Matters. Volume 6, issue number 48, Colony Crisis. Volume 6, issue number 49, Seeds. Volume 6, issue number 50, The Runaway Ride. And finally, Volume 6, issue number 51, Deadly Allies. You'd move back to Star Wars Tales here, this time from Tales 22, the story Honor Bound. This was an official tie-in to the Star Wars Republic Commando video game. Now we transition back to Star Wars Republic, this time with the Dreadnoughts of Rindili. The Dreadnoughts of Rindili contains issues number 69 through 71 of Star Wars Republic. You'd move back into the Clone Wars graphic novella series, this time with The Smuggler's Code, then The Sith Hunters. The Sith Hunters is set shortly after the events of the episode Revenge in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Then you would read the four-issue miniseries Darth Maul Death Sentence. This story is set between the Sith Hunters from the graphic novella series and the Clone Wars Season 5 premiere, Revival. Then you would go to the final digest-sized graphic novella for the Clone Wars, Defenders of the Lost Temple. Then something we haven't seen for a little bit, Star Wars Visionaries, the story Deep Forest. Back to Clone Wars Adventures, this time with volume number 6, the story The Drop. Then we would get to the 2006 free comic book day issue, Star Wars Routine Valor following Commander Cody and the clones during the Battle of Sarish. Back to Republic for the story Trackdown. Trackdown is made up of issues 72 and 73 of Republic. Then you would move into the miniseries Star Wars Obsession. This story follows Obi-Wan and Anakin as they forsake their duties and hunt down Asajj Ventress. Next is another Star Wars visionary story, this time the Artist of Naboo. Next, the Star Wars Free Comic Book Day 2005 special, this time with a story that takes place four and a half months before the events of Revenge of the Sith. We begin another round of the Clone Wars comic UK series, this time starting with the story Paradise Lost in Volume 6, Issue Number 52, Update in Volume 6, Issue Number 53, and Hot Shot in Volume 6, Issue Number 54. We go back to Star Wars Visionaries, this time for the story Synthesis. Let's go back to Republic again for issues number 74 through 77 in the story Siege of Seleucami. Then moving on back to Clone Wars Adventures, this time volume 5, the story What Goes Up. 
We'll change gears a bit and go into a series of daily web strips published on Hyperspace, the official Star Wars fan club website. This series was titled Reversal of Fortune, following a story that takes place during the last days of the Clone Wars. It contained 169 strips in total. We get to one more Clone Wars Adventures story, this time Volume 6, a story starring Kiati Mundi in To the Vanishing Point. And then the only piece of Star Wars literature that is both canon and legends, the miniseries Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir. The story shows Darth Maul being rescued by the Death Watch from his capture by Darth Sidious as we see at the end of The Clone Wars Season 5. We move on to the next graphic, and with it, we move on to the Dark Times part of the Rise of the Empire era. This, of course, begins with Revenge of the Sith, which received an official comic book adaptation. Revenge of the Sith is followed up by Republic Hidden Enemy, which contains issues number 81, 82, and 83 of Star Wars Republic. This story focuses on Luminara unduly during the end of the Clone Wars. Back to the Clone Wars Adventures, Volume 4 has the story Orders. Next is the Clone Wars Adventures Volume 5 story, The Order of Outcasts, and the Clone Wars Adventures Volume 4 story, Descent. Back to Republic, this time the story Into the Unknown, consisting of issues number 79 and 80. This story focuses on the aftermath of Order 66. Jump back to Republic number 78, with the story titled Loyalties. This story is set approximately two weeks after Revenge of the Sith. Another story from Hyperspace, the official Star Wars fan club's website, comes the web strip Evasive Action Recruitment. Then we move into the Star Wars Purge series. Purge is a series of one-shots starring Darth Vader. The first one is just called Star Wars Purge. Then you would move on to Clone Wars Adventures Volume 9, the story Salvaged. We'd go back to Purge, this time with the one-shot Purge Seconds to Die. Then the Purge one-shot The Hidden Blade. Then the only Purge two-parter, The Tyrant's Fist, issues 1 and 2. We move on to the first of the Darth Vader comic book miniseries, starting with Darth Vader and the Lost Command. In this story, Vader must journey to the Ghost Nebula to recover somebody near and dear to his nemesis, Grand Moff Tarkin. Then we begin the Star Wars Dark Times series. You would read all of Dark Times here, starting with the first volume, Dark Times, The Path to Nowhere, containing five issues. Issues 6 through 10 contain the story Dark Times Parallels. Issues 11 and 12 contain parts 5 and 6 of the crossover story Vector. Issues 0 and 13 through 17 contain the story Dark Times Blue Harvest. Then issues 18 through 22 contain Dark Times Out of the Wilderness. Issues 23 through 27 contain Dark Times Fire Carrier. And finally, issues 28 through 32 contain Dark Times, A Spark Remains. You would then move into the second of the Darth Vader five-issue miniseries, this time Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison. This story sees a traitorous uprising against the Empire, leaving Emperor Palpatine close to death. Saving the Emperor appears to be a lost cause unless Darth Vader can uncover the secrets of the Jedi Council and locate the mysterious Ghost Prison. We go back to Star Wars Tales in issue number 12, the short story The Duty, then back to the Darth Vader five-issue miniseries with Darth Vader and the Ninth Assassin. This story sees Darth Vader take down eight assassins hired to murder him, and now he seeks the Ninth Assassin, the one who hired all of them. Next is the follow-up series to the Hyperspace Official Star Wars Fan Club web strip Evasive Action Recruitment, this time Evasive Action Prey. Then you would end it off with Evasive Action Endgame. Next is the final Darth Vader five-issue miniseries, Darth Vader and the Cry of Shadows. This story sees a bitter clone trooper left for dead during the Clone Wars who decides to follow the leadership of Darth Vader. We would jump ahead from the years following Revenge of the Sith, this time with Droids, an eight-issue comic book series published by Star Comics, an imprint of Marvel Comics from 1986 to 1987. We move to the next graphic here, starting with the Star Wars Tales number 11 story, The Princess Leia Diaries, then the Star Star Wars Tales number 15 story Falling Star, the Star Wars Tales number 15 story Sandstorm, and then the Dark Horse Presents annual 1999 DHP Junior story. 
Luke Skywalker's walkabout. We would then move into Dark Horse Comics Droids series. The chronology of droids begins with the Droid Special, which was the last issue published in the series. It continues with an eight-page comic from Star Wars Galaxy Magazine number one called Droids Are Tuesday Out, then continues with Droids issues one through six, making up the story The Kalarba Adventures. Then the renumbering of droids technically with a volume two featuring droids volume two issue number one through four titled rebellion then issues five through eight of that renumbering from 1995 droids season of revolt then concluding with the oversized one shot droids the protocol offensive we go back to Star Wars Tales, this time for issue number 20, the story Young Lando Calrissian. Then we move into the Jabba one-shot series, containing four one-shots titled The Gar Supplin Hit, The Hunger of Princess Nampi, Dynasty Trap, and Betrayal. Next is the story Routine from Star Wars Tales number 2, then the Boba Fett miniseries Boba Fett, Enemy of the Empire. After that, you would get to Star Wars Tales number 15, the story First Impressions. And then the graphic novel adaptation of the video game The Force Unleashed, titled Star Wars The Force Unleashed. The next graphic here sees the beginning of the Star Wars Agent of the Empire series. Agent of the Empire was made up of two main arcs. The first one is titled Iron Eclipse, and the second is titled Hard Targets. Next, you could read a comic strip adaptation of the Han Solo Adventures novel Han Solo at Star's End. Next, you would read This Crumb for Hire, a story within A Decade of Dark Horse's comic anthology, A Decade of Dark Horse, number two. You remember that Django, Fett, and Boba Fett story that we talked about all the way back at the beginning of the video? Next, you would jump into issues number three and four of that series, Blood Ties, The Tale of Django and Boba Fett. Then you would go into Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 graphic novel adaptation of the video game, and then begin the Star Wars Adventures digest size graphic novella series with the first one, Han Solo and the Hollow Moon of Coria. Move back to Star Wars Tales, this time from issues number one and two, a two-part story called Extinction. Next, we would begin the Empire series, issues number one through four, containing the story known as Empire Betrayal. After that, you would jump back to Star Wars Tales for issue number six, the story The Hovel on Turk Street. Then you would move to a five-issue miniseries known as Underworld, the Yavin Basilica. This story recounts the madcap adventure to retrieve the fabled Yavin Basilica for a trio of huts competing to see who could gather the most talented team of mercenaries. You'd continue with Empire, this time reading the story Dark Lighter. This story is featured in issues number 8, 9, 12, and 15 of Empire. Then you would move on to the oversized story in Star Wars Tales number 9. It featured 48 pages, known as Resurrection. This story is famous for featuring Darth Maul confronting Darth Vader. Next, you would move to the X-Wing Rogue Squadron Half Issue, featuring a short story starring Rogue Squadron as they get in a dogfight with TIE Fighters shortly before the Battle of Yavin. Then you would go all the way back to Empire Issues number 5 and 6 for a story titled Princess Warrior. The story sees Princess Leia undertaking a covert mission to deliver much-needed supplies to the Rebel Alliance on the planet Raltir. Next, in Star Wars Tales number 19, is the two-page comic story, The Value of Proper Intelligence to Any Successful Military Campaign is Not to be Underestimated. This comic tells the story of a small Imperial detachment sent to conquer the rural planet of Gabella. After that, you would read Star Wars Blood Ties, the second arc known as Boba Fett is Dead. So now that we've wrapped up the Rise of the Empire era, there are a few stories that are contained within the era but we do not know their placement on the timeline. I've grouped them all on this graphic here. I'm not going to go through each and every story here, but you can take a screenshot of this graphic and study it and figure out what's the best placement you would like to put these stories in, or just read them at the end of the Rise of the Empire era after you've read everything else. Which would take you to 2013's free comic book day issue, Star Wars The Assassination of Darth Vader. Next, we have finally reached A New Hope in the timeline. There are two ways to read A New Hope in comic form. One way, which I guess would be the official canonical way, is to read A New Hope, the special edition. This is a four-issue miniseries adapting the special edition version of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. The second way would be to read the 70s adaptation, which are contained in the first six issues of Star Wars 1977. 
after you read your A New Hope adaptations, you would read the Star Wars Tales issue number 12, Story Once Bitten. After that, you would read Star Wars Empire number 13, What Sin is Loyalty. This issue delivers a rare view of the days of the Rebellion from the point of view of a stormtrooper who is commissioned on the Death Star. Next, you would read Empire issue number 14, The Savage Heart, which sees Darth Vader attempt to make it to an Imperial safe haven after the destruction of the Death Star. Next, you would move into the Pizzazz Magazine Star Wars comic strip stories, beginning with at first an untitled installment now known as The Keeper's World. The Los Angeles Times Syndicate ran many Star Wars comic strips over the course of the 70s and 80s, beginning with Tatooine Sojourn, continuing with the second Kessel Run, then the Bounty Hunter of Ord Mantell, Darth Vader Strikes, The Serpent Masters, Deadly Reunion, Traitor's Gambit, The Night Beast, The Return of Ben Kenobi. You'd also read Gambler's World, Princess Leia Imperial Servant, Bring Me the Children, As Long as We Live, The Frozen World of Oda, Planet of Kadrill, The Power Gym, Ice World, Revenge of the Jedi, Doom Mission, Race for Survival, The Paradise Detour, A New Beginning, Showdown, and The Final Trap. Then you would move back into the Star Wars 77 comic from Marvel, reading issue number seven, titled New Planets, New Perils. Next, you would go back to Empire, reading the story arc, to the Last Man. This story was collected in Empire issues number 16 through 18. You would then jump back into the Marvel 1977 Star Wars line, reading issues number 8 through 15. I'm not going to detail the stories of each issue of the Marvel 77 Star Wars line, but I will tell you the chronological way to read them. So after issue number 15, you would jump ahead to issue number 24, titled Silent Drifting. Then you would go backwards, starting with issue number 16, which introduces the bounty hunter character Bylert Valance, who is still a main character in Star Wars canon today. You would read issues number 16 through 23 here. Then you would go back to Empire, going all the way back to issue number 7 for a story called Sacrifice. Then you would get back into the Marvel 1977 Star Wars comic book, reading issues number 25 through 34, before returning to Star Wars Tales number 3, reading the story Lady Luck. This is where you would start the Star Wars 2013 line that ran from 2013 to the end of 2014. The stories contained in the series were In the Shadow of Yavin, which featured the first six issues, issues 7 through 12 made up from the ruins of Alderaan, issues 13 and 14 made up Five Days of Sith, issues 15, 16, 17, and 18 made up Rebel Girl, and issues 19 and 20 made up Shattered Hope. You would then continue with Vader's Quest, a four-issue miniseries about how Darth Vader discovers Luke Skywalker, the pilot who destroyed the Death Star, was his son. After that, you would jump over to the first annual from the Star Wars 1977 series. And then here, you would read the stories from the UK magazine, The Empire Strikes Back Monthly, starting with the story from issue 154, written by the comic book legend Alan Moore. This story is titled, Talatni Throws a Shape. Then you would read Dark Lord's Conscience, Blind Fury in issue 159, The Pandora Effect in issue 151, Rust Never Sleeps in issue 156, and Dark Knight's Devilry in issue 153. You would then move back to the Star Wars Marvel 1977 line, reading issues 35 through 37. Then you would read the one-shot Shadow Stalker, which was originally published in Star Wars Galaxy Magazine number 10, and tied into the Star Wars Shadows of the Empire multimedia campaign. Jump back into Star Wars Empire, this time with issue number 19, Target Vader. Then to Star Wars Tales number 8, which contained the story Death Star Pirates, originally published in issues 16 through 20 of Star Wars Kids Magazine. Then you would read Boba Fett Half Issue Salvage. Then back to Empire for the two issue series A Little Piece of Home, containing issues number 20 and 21. Then issue 22 of Empire, titled Alone Together. Then the four issue miniseries Star Wars River of Chaos. Then back to Empire for issue 23 The Bravery of Being Out of Range. The next story arc from Star Wars Empire, issues 24 and 25 Idiot's Array, followed by General Skywalker, issues 26 and 27 of Star Wars Empire. 
then issue number 28 of Star Wars Empire Wreckage, issue number 31 of Star Wars Empire The Price of Power, then the next arc from Empire In the Shadows of Their Fathers, containing issues 29, 30, 32, 33, and 34. Then you would read issue number 35 of Empire, A Model Officer. Then issues 36 through 40 containing the story, The Wrong Side of the War. Then here is where you would read the entirety of the Star Wars Rebellion comic book storyline. You would begin with the first series containing issues 0 through 5, titled My Brother, My Enemy. Then issues 6 through 10, The Ahakasita Gambit. Issues 11 through 14, Small Victories. And issues 15 and 16, which make up parts 7 and 8 of Vector. After that, move to the Boba Fett one-shot, Boba Fett overkill after that you can move to star wars tales number four where you can read the story sandblasted then you would read the next daily web strip from the hyperspace official star wars fan club website rookies rendezvous that is followed up with the story rookies no turning back then you'd finally go back to the Star Wars Adventures graphic novella series for the story Chewbacca and the Slavers of the Shadowlands. Next is the story from Star Wars Tales number 7, Outbid but Never Outgunned, featuring the first appearance of Boba Fett's former wife, Sintas Vell, and their daughter, Aelin Vell. Then you would read the story from Star Wars Tales number 18, Payback. Now you would get back into the Star Wars 1977 Marvel line, reading issue number 38, Riders in the Void. We're finally creeping closer to the Empire Strikes Back, getting out of zero ABY. Then you would read the story from Star Wars Tales number 21, Walking the Path That's Given. Into 2 ABY, we have Splinter of the Mind's Eye, an adaptation of the first ever follow-up novel to the original Star Wars film. Then you would read another of the graphic novellas from Star Wars Adventures, Princess Leia and the Royal Ransom, followed up by Star Wars Adventures, Boba Fett and the Ship of Fear. Then you would go to the 2014 four-issue miniseries, Rebel Heist. Jumping over to the next graphic, we finally arrived at The Empire Strikes Back, and the last story we have before we get there is a valentine story a one shot set shortly before the empire strikes back focusing on the relationship of han and leia then you would read the star wars 1977 lines adaptation of the empire strikes back this is featured in issues number 39 through 44 you would move to star wars tales number five which features the short story hoth then you would move back to Star Wars Visionaries for the story Entrenched. Then you would move back to the Star Wars Adventures graphic novella series with Luke Skywalker and the Treasure of the Dragon Snakes, which takes place during The Empire Strikes Back from Star Wars Tales number 4, Moment of Doubt. A story that takes place during Luke's training on Dagobah, Slippery Slope from Star Wars Tales number 15, Thank the Maker from Star Wars Tales number 6. Then you would move to the Star Wars Adventures graphic novella series, The Will of Darth Vader. You'd pick back up with the Star Wars 1977 line here, reading issues number 45 through 49. Then you would read the story from Star Wars Tales number 15, Lucky Stars. Back to Star Wars 77, this time for issue number 50. Then Star Wars 77, issue number 108, which was published in 2019 during the Disney canon era of Star Wars and is the latest addition to the literary world of Star Wars Legends. Then you would go back to Star Wars 77, issue 51, through 57 then jump forward to star wars 77 issue number 64 then you would read the second annual from star wars 77 and you'd go back a ways to star wars 77 58 and read issues 58 through 63 since you already read 64 then you would read issues 65 through 67 then you'd put star wars 77 on hold to read the digest sized graphic novella Ewoks Shadows of Endor. Then you would go back to the Star Wars 77 line reading issues 68 through 72. After that you would finally get into Shadows of the Empire, the six issue miniseries that was a part of the Shadows of the Empire multimedia campaign. The comic series of Shadows of the Empire is where we mostly focus on the story of Boba Fett during Shadows of the Empire. Remember the Bounty Hunter one-shot issues I mentioned all the way back before The Phantom Menace? Well, here we continue it finally with the second issue, Bounty Hunter's Scoundrel's Wages. Then you would read Battle of the Bounty Hunters, which is a pop-up comic book adaptation of Shadows of the Empire, which shows the battle between Boba Fett and IG-88. 
Next, we go back to Star Wars 77, creeping closer to Return of the Jedi. This time you would read issues 73 through 80. Then you would continue with the third annual of the Star Wars 1977 series. Then you'd move back to Star Wars Tales, this time in issue number six. You'd read the story, A Hot Time in the Cold Town. Then in issue number seven, you would read Nerf Herder. And in issue number two, you would read Stop That Jawa, starring Max Rebo and his Jizz Whalers. Now you would finally get into Return of of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi was not adapted within the Marvel 1977 Star Wars series. Instead, it received its own four-issue miniseries adapting the events of the film. Coinciding and taking place slightly after Return of the Jedi is the Mara Jade six-issue miniseries Mara Jade by the Emperor's Hand. Next, you would move back into Star Wars 77, this time for issue number 81. This story is the first in the Marvel line to take place after Return of the Jedi. You'd go back to Star Wars Tales number 10, this time reading the story A Wookiee Scorned. Then you would read Star Wars Tales number 15, the story Do or Do Not. Then here, we're going to start to finish up the Rebellion era, continuing with Star Wars 77 in issues 82 through 88, then jumping to issue 90 and 91, going back and reading issue 89, then jumping all the way over to issue number 98. Then we take a break and read Star Wars Tales number 23, The Wedge Antilles Story, Lucky. Then we get back into Star Wars 77 and read issues 92 through 97, before skipping ahead a bit to issue 101, then returning back a bit to issue 99 and 100. Then moving forward once again for the final issues of the series, issues 102 through 107. After you finish the Marvel 77 line, you would read Star Wars Tales number 4, the story Spare Parts, and then go back to Star Wars Tales number one for the story Mara Jade, A Night on the Town. Here we get towards the end of the second longest period of Star Wars comics, The Rebellion Era, continuing here with Star Wars Tales number three, the story Three Against the Galaxy, then the Star Wars Tales number 12 story A Day in the Life, and then we finally enter into the world of the X-Wing comics, beginning with the three-issue miniseries X-Wing Rogue Leader. The X-Wing Rogue Squadron series began in 1995. The series contained multiple story arcs, including issues 1 through 4, The Rebel Opposition, issues 5 through 8, The Phantom Affair, a Rogue Squadron special issue, issues 9 through 12, Battleground Tatooine, issues 13 through 16, X-Wing Rogue Squadron The Warrior Princess, issues 17 through 20, Requiem for a Rogue, issues 21 through 24, In the Empire's Service, issues 26 and 27, Family Ties, issues 28 through 31, Masquerade, and issues 32 through 35, Mandatory Retirement. Then you would continue with the final part of the Shadows of the Empire storyline, Shadows of the Empire Evolution. The storyline follows the human replica droid known as Guri, Prince Zizor's personal assassin. You would then finally end the Rebellion era with the Jabba tape. And the same way we had extraneous stories that did not get an actual placement in the Rise of the Empire era, we do not know the placement of these stories from the Rebellion era. Again, I'm not going to go over every single story here, but they're all on this graphic. If you'd like to take a screenshot of it and figure out where you would like to best place these stories in your read through, you're welcome to do so. Next, we move into the New Republic era, which is admittedly a much larger era for Star Wars novels than comics, but there are still some big stories that take place here. We begin with Star Wars Tales number 22, featuring the story Marooned, then Star Wars Tales number 10 with the story Free Memory. Then we get into a series of Boba Fett one-shots, beginning with Boba Fett Twin Engines of Destruction, then move back to Star Wars Tales number 5 for the story Lando's Commandos on Eagle's Wings, then Star Wars Tales number 8 to the story The One That Got Away, and then Star Wars Tales 17's story Phantom Menaces. Star Wars Tales number 18 features the story being Boba Fett. Then we move into the seminal Thrawn trilogy, which is adapted in three different comic book adaptations. The first begins with a six-issue adaptation of Heir to the Empire, continues with a six-issue adaptation of Dark Force Rising, and ends with a six-issue adaptation of The Last Command. Then you would move to the series, which is credited for pretty much reviving Star Wars comics in the 90s. The six-issue series that began the Dark Empire trilogy, Star Wars Dark Empire. The series is set six years after the Battle of Endor, and sees Luke Skywalker and our main original trilogy cast of characters have to deal with the second coming of Emperor Palpatine. 
Dark Empire is followed up with a sequel, Dark Empire 2. Next, we get into another Boba Fett one-shot, Boba Fett Bounty on Barcuda. Then Boba Fett When the Fat Lady Swings. And finally, Boba Fett Murder Most Foul. Then you would get to the final chapter of the Dark Empire trilogy, Dark Empire 3 Empire's End. Then you would get into another Boba Fett one-shot, Boba Fett Agent of Doom. Then you would begin the first part of the Crimson Empire trilogy, beginning with Crimson Empire. The story of Crimson Empire follows member of the Emperor's Royal Guard, Kier Kanos, who goes against his traitorous foe, Karner Jax. Next, he would jump back to the Bounty Hunters one-shot series with the issue Bounty Hunters Kinnix Kill. Kinnix Kill does tie into the Crimson Empire saga. You would then read Crimson Empire 2 Council of Blood. Council of Blood is also a six-issue miniseries and follows up the story of Kier Kanos. Then the Crimson Empire 2 tie-in Hard Currency, which appeared in Dark Horse Extra number 21 through 24. After that, you would read Star Wars Tales number 16, the short story The Other. Then the four-issue miniseries titled Jedi Academy Leviathan. Then you would go to Dark Horse Presents number 1 from 2011 for a short story titled The Third Time Pays for All. This story is a prequel to Crimson Empire 3 Empire Lost. Then you would read Crimson Empire 3 Empire Lost, which is released over a decade after Crimson Empire 2. Then you would read the Star Wars Tales number 8 story, The Secret Tales of Luke's Hand, before getting into the Star Wars Tales number 11 story, Tall Tales. Then we get into the last part of the New Republic era with the Star Wars Tales number 19 story, Collapsing New Empires. And then one of the most important and seminal stories of the New Republic era, Star Wars Union, which chronicles the marriage of Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade as set up in Timothy Zahn's Hand of Thrawn duology. New Republic era ends in Star Wars comics with a story from Star Wars Tales number 14 titled Apocalypse Endor. The New Jedi Order era of Star Wars comics is very, very short. It begins with the ongoing series Star Wars Invasion. Invasion is set during the Yuuzhan Vong War, focusing on the Galfridian family, the royal family from the peaceful world of Artorias. The series is made up of 16 issues across three different arcs. The first arc from issue 0 to 5 is Refugees, issues 6 through 11 make up Rescues, and issues 12 through 16 make up Revelations. This is followed up with the Star Wars Tales number 18 story Revenants, which also takes place during the Yuuzhan Vong War. Then you would read, and this is a bit of a spoiler for New Jedi Order, or at least the first book, Vector Prime, you would read Star Wars Chewbacca, featuring reminiscences from Chewbacca's friends after his death in the novel Vector Prime. The New Jedi Order in comics concludes with Star Wars Tales number 21, the story Equals and Opposites. The last era of Star Wars comics is the Legacy Era. The first story in that timeline takes place in 48 ABY from Tales number 19. It's called The Lost Lightsaber. Then we jump way into the future in 104 ABY in the Star Wars visionary story known as Celestia Galactica Photographica. Then we would jump to what the Legacy Era is literally named after, which was the ongoing Star Wars comic book series, Star Wars Legacy, which takes place from 130 ABY to 137 ABY. Legacy follows protagonist Cade Skywalker, a descendant of the Skywalker family who has given up his Jedi lineage to pursue a life as a bounty hunter. It featured a zero half issue, one, two, three, and five through seven, making up the story Broken, issue number eight, telling the story Allies, four, tells the story Noob, nine and 10, tells Trust Issues, 13 is Ready to Die, 11 and 12, tells Ghosts, 14 through 19 and the zero issue are the claws of the dragon. 20 through 22 and 27 are indomitable. 23 and 24 make up loyalties. 25 and 26 make up the hidden temple. 28 through 31 make up parts 9 through 12 of Vector. 32 and 33 make up Fight Another Day. 34 through 36 make up Storms. 41 tells the story Rogue's End. 37 through 40 make up the story Tatooine. 42 is titled Divided Loyalties. 43 through 46 make up the story Monster. 47 is titled The Fate of Dak. And 48 through 50 make up the story Extremes. Legacy is concluded in the six issue miniseries Legacy War. Only a year later in the timeline, Legacy Volume 2 takes place, or Legacy 2. 
Legacy 2 stars Aenea Solo, a descendant of Han and Leia. The series was made up of four story arcs, first The Prisoner of the Floating World in issues 1 through 5, issues 6 through 10 make up Outcasts of the Broken Ring, issues 11 through 15 make up Wanted Aenea Solo, and issues 16 through 18 make up Empire of One. And finally, there are stories that we don't know the era or the placement for them, these are all a part of the Legends continuity, so they are technically canonical. They are all listed here. Most of these are just kind of fun tale stories to begin with. And that is it. That ends the Star Wars Legends comic book timeline. Now, I will go over one other thing before we wrap up this video, and that is during Star Wars Legends, there were many stories published that were considered non-canonical. Most of these stories exist in what we call Star Wars Infinities. Star Wars Infinities does not have any specific timeline order. Star Wars did receive four manga adaptations. There were also two Star Wars manga short story compilations, Star Wars Black and Star Wars Silver. The name Infinities really comes from the Star Wars original trilogy Infinities adaptations. Star Wars Tales also dove into a lot of Infinity style storytelling. The Visionaries comic book compilation story also had two Infinities stories. Infinities also included the comedic stories of the characters Tag and Bink. Then there were other Infinity stories such as The Star Wars, which is a comic book adaptation of some of the earliest drafts of George Lucas's ideas for Star Wars. And that is officially it. That is every single Star Wars Legends comic book story. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. That was a long video and a ton of work, so if you please could give me a like on this video. I would greatly appreciate it and subscribe if you haven't. Canon Comics will be coming soon. I'll also be doing Canon video games and Legends video games. Thank you all again so much for watching. Make sure you leave a comment down below as well. And I will see you all next time.